head and arm choke from the mount. David's going to be pressing up and Kevin's going to knock the arms across. So his right arm goes under the head and he's going to do what's called a gable grip. All right, so uh, the arm that goes under the head is palm down, the other arm is palm up. All right, you're not using your thumbs in that grip. Uh, Kevin's going to want his ear to be right next to David's. At this point, he can swivel off into side control. Actually, you have finishing pressure right there. If you put downward pressure on the head and arm choke, you can finish it there. Or you can go flat, and then you're going to start to wrench it on by walking your feet away from their head. And that'll be your finishing pressure on the head and arm choke. Right. Lapel chokes from the mount. We're going to do palm up, palm down first. So we open the collar, insert the hand, fist on the floor, and then we're going to base out. All right. With this arm in the collar, you have to think that essentially it's trapped and that you could be rolled. So that's why you want to base out kind of on this side a little bit to make that tougher for the person to do. Now when Kevin's going to go for the choke, we don't just simply put that hand in the collar because we could be rolled. So he's going to slide it all the way across to base out with. That way if there was a bridge, he would be able to put that hand out for, for base. All right, now he's going to reverse shave and he's going to get his grip when his hand reaches the collar. We want to have this connection with the wrist right against the neck. And then Kevin's going to put his head on the floor for base and then he's going to be able to pull his elbows by his body in order to get the finishing pressure. Good. So now sometimes you're going to have to fight for, for one then the other. So let's say that he's going to actually fake a palm down choke and if something happens and he can't get it, he can pop the chin up and insert that hand underneath for the palm up, palm up choke. So your head goes to the top hand again and pulling the elbows by the ribs and make a big chest. When you put your head on the floor too, Kevin's being kind of nice right now, you do want to use it for base and instead of having literally just the top of your head on the floor, you can even put like your forehead or the bridge of your nose on the floor um, will make your base actually a little bit better in case the person bridges. That's our palm up, palm down, palm up, palm up chokes, and they can be used in combination. Kimura from the mount. So David's on the bottom and it doesn't matter why, if he's a, if he's a beginner, doesn't do jiu-jitsu, got tired, uh, he, he's, gonna, he's thinking about doing a uh, knee to elbow escape, but he uses his, his hand to push on the knee. So Kevin's gonna trap it, he's gonna you know, really put a whole lot of weight on it so that, Ke or that David won't be able to move it. And Kevin's gonna go under the arm to get his Kimura grip. Now he's going to dismount so that he can finish the Kimura. All right, so what we're going to need is for this elbow to come up and this hand to go that way. And bringing David up is going to make that easier. So Kevin's going to step over his head. And even if they were to roll and switch positions, it wouldn't matter. Once the arm is away from the body, uh, no matter where they end up after this, Kevin's going to end up finishing the submission. Pendulum sweep from the guard. So Kevin's going to go into the arm bar that you already know. As he gets it, David saves his arm and immediately, well, let me bring this up. David, in order to save his arm, has to put a little bit of pressure this way. All right. So what we're going to do is sweep them basically towards their head, which is going to happen on a lot of sweeps, most sweeps. So when Kevin whips this leg off, this heel is going to go that way and cut David's base out and we're going to take it to mount. an excellent combination going from the arm bar to the pendulum sweep. 1.5 triangle from the guard. So we're in stage one, between stage one and two is 1.5. So uh, David throws a punch, Kevin's gonna block it, and he's gonna go to 1.5. All right, so from right here, we've got a really good position to start off with. We've got some posture control, this leg's high on the back, he's got the wrist, and from here we got a lot of attacks. So to start off with, David's going to kind of push down on his hand. Kevin's going to use, he's going to kind of bite down with this leg and that's going to make it easier to pull that leg out. This is kind of a stopping point if you want to use that to put it onto the bicep before you slip it over the shoulder. And then we'll go through our normal triangle finish. We'll bring the arm across, stuff the wrist, grab the head, all right? And then we'll put the foot in the, in the hip so that we can walk away. And that kind of lengthens this distance between their heads and then he can hook up the figure four. And then our finishing pressure is on the head, squeeze the knees together, good to go. All right, now, 
Uh, another version of this is that the person's holding on to your leg and you can't pull yours out. Okay, so right here, if David is holding on to that leg, what we're gonna do is kick our leg through and then bring it around. You notice that we're gonna break our own grip right here. So the leg takes the place of the arm and then we end up in another triangle position. I'm gonna plot it from the guard and we're gonna, this can start from several different positions but we're gonna start right from the triangle. So we're not able to get the arm across. So one opportunity that we could have uh, would be to go to the Uma plot. All right, so immediately, you notice that David got the wrist and he got the ankle. Holding the ankle gives us a, a leg attack, but it also helps us to control uh, the person's roll if they were trying to roll out of our Uma plotum. We also have an attack on, on the arm itself if we wanted it. But right now we're gonna do the classic finish for the Uma plotum. Uma plotum is a shoulder lock. So David rocks himself up, and in order to finish this, we need to drag our opponent's shoulder onto the floor. If they go completely flat, that couldn't be more perfect. All right, but right now with our opponent's shoulder on the floor, we're able to have our feet here, and it makes it easy for us to sit up to finish the submission. I'm gonna plot a finish from another angle. So David's gonna scoot away, and that drags Kevin's shoulder onto the ground. We throw our feet to the side, and then now we come to sit up. All right, cross collar chokes from the guard. So David's gonna go ahead and get his palm up grip. All right, this is very important uh, with the gi. Uh, it's a really good handle to get into a lot of attacks. Right now we're just doing the chokes. So we're gonna start off going palm up, palm down, just like we did from the mount. So he's gonna cut to the side so he has a clear view of his target there. All right, he's got his uh, wrist right on the carotid and then he gets his grip. Then we go ahead and square up, ear to ear. Right, um, now, if the, these chokes need to be used in combination most of the time. So we start off the same. He's trying to get that. There's a, you know, a problem with getting it. So a lot of times he's gonna bring that elbow up again and shoot the hand under this time for palm up, palm up grip. All right, and remember when we're doing this that we're pulling the elbows by the body, just like a, a lat row in the gym. If you bring your elbows out, the person can just collapse your elbows down. All right, so you want to use your back muscles and open your, your chest up for a really strong choke. All right, so uh, the reverse can also be true as far as the combination is concerned. Um, you, know, you can start with going under, and maybe the person brings their hand over to block it, and you can trap it with your arm, and then come over. All right, so we're gonna break guard. Kevin's got a good grip on the belt. If it was no gi, then you could put your hands underneath their ribs. All right, but right now we're gonna use the gi. All right, so we got the belt, and we wanna make sure that we posture and we get our elbows on the inside. Okay, you never want those elbows hanging out. It's gonna be, it's gonna be an important detail later on when you're sparring with people who are more advanced. All right, so we're gonna put one knee out, and then we'll put the other knee in the middle. At this point, you're gonna stretch everything back to open the guard and then we want to make sure that guard stays open so we can bring our knee up and then start looking to pass. Bullfighter pass. So Kevin is in the process of breaking the guard open and David sees what's happening and he goes ahead and tries to put his feet on the hips, which, which is not wrong, but Kevin's going to use it against him. So he's going to scoop the ankles and get up. So he's going to end up throwing the legs to the side, delivering a punch on the way into side control. Which, I mean, you can take the punch out if you're just sparring, all right? You know, you're not hitting your partner, all right? It works really well, but if you add the punch, it works even better. All right, so in the same uh, idea, you can use the gi against them as well. So you can go to the knees or you can go lower. The grip is, you know, people like different grips there. But once again, you're gonna be getting the legs out of your way, going to knee on belly, uh, side control, whatever you want to do after that. The staple pass. So we already broke guard, we've got our knee up, and we're going to move the same direction as our knee. So if it's his right leg, he's going to put his right knee on the floor, and you notice the first thing that he did was get his chest down. That's going to be important. So next thing is he's going to take this arm and reach underneath the leg. All right, 
So we want to make sure that we're going to be able to escape this leg before we get rid of this staple. And of course it's the staple because we have the knee on this side and we have the toes on the floor on this side. So that's going to stay there to the very end. So David passes his leg out. At this point, as soon as he releases this staple, he has to expect a fight here of the hips. And that's why that arm is in control of this leg. So as soon as he takes the staple out, he's able to force the hips back. And then he puts that arm there to keep the person from trying to put him back in guard or whatever. The cut through pass. So we were going to do the staple pass possibly. You can do this pass just because you like it or because they fought your first pass. So if that staple pass is on that side and he redirects the knee, Amy's gonna switch to the cut through pass. So she had an underhook on that version, but on this one, we're gonna go ahead and get the collar. So same thing, pushes the knee, and she gets the collar grip this time. And she slides through, ends up in side control. Balance and posture in the guard. So we talked about earlier uh, that you don't wanna have your elbows hanging out when, uh, you know, as you're trying to come up. You wanna get your posture and keep your elbows in. The arms are not supposed to be pressing down. You know, imagine if you were putting your weight on your hands and the person was able to buckle those arms, you would come crashing down. Because the guy on the bottom has the ability, let's say Kevin has no hands on David, all right? David can just pull him forward with his legs. All right? He also has arms, so he's gonna be able to pull and fight with the arms as well. So these are purely to brace your posture. All right, so you know Kevin, Kevin's postured up, all right, trying not to be pulled back down. And a lot of people are going to say, "Don't even look at him. You know, have your head up because you know, you know where they're at. You can see him. Just keep your arms locked in and keep your your posture up." Now the knees are kind of splayed out for base, um, and it's all about just being there and having good, you know, a good sturdy posture and a lot of balance so that you can start your passes. That's all it is. All right, so protecting our arms when we're in somebody's guard. To start off with, you know, maybe Kevin had just done a takedown, a double leg, just like off of the first two stripes. Uh, he's got his hands in the biceps. That's to keep David from getting the first grips as Kevin is going to posture. So he goes straight from the biceps up to posture, and then he secures that position. Uh, if we didn't do that, let's say Kevin's hands were on the ground, all right, that would be a mistake because there's a lot of submissions that could happen, you know, and sweeps just from that fact that you put your hand on the ground. So uh, Kevin's arm is in peril because David was getting ready to do a Kimura on it. Other things to think about is not letting this arm be too high up on the, up on the chest. Earlier we did the arm bar uh, when somebody's strangling us. So we're able to get a perfect fit in because we put our arm in the wrong place. Another rule is if you had your forearms on the, you know, on the body, to definitely not let them get past the center line. You know, if it just, oh, right now that's an extreme example, all right, but the more it goes, the more it gives up the back and other stuff. But if it's just at all past that center line, we've definitely uh, given our, the other person the ability to maybe put the foot on the hip, and keep the, keep the knee pinched in, and that's gonna leave your arm in a very bad spot for an arm bar. So that's why we go through the steps that we get to the biceps and we posture and get our arms locked in nice and tight. Uh, and then with the, making sure that our elbows aren't hanging out the side, because it makes it easy for somebody to break us down and put us into a Kimura. All right, protecting the neck and the guard. The same deal applies, you know, we wanted to get to that perfect posture position to minimize the other person's ability to attack our neck. If Kevin puts his hands on the ground and, you know, is down what I would call striking range, uh, David can sit up and get a guillotine. All right, so we definitely don't want that. We would love to be able to keep that guy down, not let him be able to come up. Um, also, his neck is completely undefended. So he can open the collar and shoot that really nice grip, come under and get the you know, a lapel choke. Um, so if Kevin was to sit up, it would be harder for David to ever get that grip in the first place, right? Because Kevin's hands would have been on the bicep and he would have been up before that grip would have been in place. 
right? So if he comes all the way up, see how low that grip is? You're not getting a choke with that. Now, let's say that the grip does get into the collar. So if Kevin doesn't like that grip, he can put two on one, break it away, put it down, and we actually have you know, guard breaks and passes that we can do from there, okay? Um, as well, let's say that David puts the hand in the collar, all right? And um, maybe he gets both hands in there. All right. One thing that we, one possible break of that is Kevin can take his forearm and bring it over the top. Let's put it, bring it over here and we'll have two on one. And as he's smashing him down, he can stretch his head up to make the grip slip. You know, anybody that's doing chokes knows how perfect those grips need to be uh, in order to finish. So that's just another thing. But the main thing is prevention. If we go from the biceps to a good posture, we keep the person from ever getting those perfect grips and hopefully we're breaking their guard and getting out of there before they get an attack going. Right. We're gonna do the turn to knees escape from side control. So David's wanting to get out of this position. At first, especially if punches are involved, you're holding on to the person so that they can't just sit up and throw punches or whatever. Okay? For you know, sparring in class or competition, this you know, may or may not be the hold that you use. All right, so he's gonna bridge just so that he can get his frame. All right, so at that point, you notice that David shrimped away, and then this arm, I always refer to it as, you know, like the, the top of a mine shaft. When you get rid of that beam, the weight's coming down on you, so you gotta get to it. So as he shoots that arm under, he's going to the legs, and he's gonna belly down and get his knees under. And once we get to this position, we're sturdy. We're weak until we get there. So. Our objective now is to pull those knees to us, to collapse their base, and then we go to side control. Headlock escape number three. So going through our system, we don't have space to make the frame, like on number one. So number two, you know, we, we grab right there and we're trying to hook their leg with ours. You know, even if we, even if, you know, David was to bridge up, which he, you know, should do to get that hook, he still doesn't have the room to get that foot in there. So what we're gonna do when we bridge up is we're gonna pull our bottom arm out and we're gonna base with it. We're gonna walk our base over to that arm to make this move easier for us. And then we're just gonna pull them where they don't have any base. So now we end up in side control on top once again. All right, defending against the mount. So Kevin's on the bottom. He does not want David to proceed over to the mount. So he's holding on to him nice and tight in the beginning. Uh, but what we're gonna do now is bring our right elbow under, and then he's gonna bring his right knee as close as he can to that elbow, but he's gonna triangle his legs there. The reason for, one reason for that is to defend against a few leg attacks, all right? Uh, but we're trying to impede David's ability to do the slide over version or the step over version. If he goes to step over, he ends up, you know, entangling his legs with Kevin's, you know, it might actually create uh, sweeps for Kevin. So just by being in that, in that position in the beginning is gonna mess up David's attacks, all right, impede him from getting to the mount. Head and arm choke from side mount. So Kevin's on the bottom and he's gonna make a, a crucial mistake. He's gonna bring his arm to the wrong side. David's gonna push it across and trap it. So he has his gable, this is just like from the mount as far as your grip and where your head goes, but David, he could finish this from the mount, but really it's gonna be better if we cross to the other side. So he's doing the slide over version and then he skips over to the other side. He's gonna drop down and put his finishing pressure on the choke. Americana from side control. So Kevin is gonna bring his arm on the other side, well really just his hand. If he had the arm over there, we would've done the head and arm choke, but this is just his hand. There's gonna be a little pressure. So David's gonna quickly turn his chest up and then catch the wrist really at the same time. He's gonna drive it back down, and then now we have that two on one grip. Now the, the thing is, a lot of people try to finish it from right here, but the guy has a lot of shoulder flexibility. The closer his hand is up towards his head, the more that elbow is gonna move. All right, so what we wanna do is slide it down towards the hip and that shoulder's gonna get really tight. Some people tap right there. So you're gonna pry the elbow up 
as you would be sliding their hand down the floor if, if need be. Another nickname for this move is the paintbrush because of your hands sliding down on, on the ground. So one more time, he's gonna be sliding the elbow towards the hip to make that shoulder really tight. And another detail too is you know, to make sure that our head is turned away from theirs, just like you know the Americana from the mount. Um, you don't want the person reaching towards your eyes or anything like that if it's self-defense as you're tearing the shoulder. So the Kimura from Side Control. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the fact that we had the, the Americana. All right, so maybe we didn't do our grip right and the person broke out of it and they're trying to save their arm by bringing it in the opposite direction. So we grip switch. This arm's gonna go under now and this one holds the wrist. So we still have our two on one. And then it's the same finish that we did before when we started it from the mount. All right, so we're gonna do the knee slide to mount. So Kevin gets his knee up onto the belly. And if you notice, this arm is actually trapped. It's not underneath us. That's a pretty important detail. Um, you've already learned how to do the, the knee to elbow escape from side control. All right, so you wanna make sure that as you're going to mount, that you're not giving that to them. All right, so everything's in, in check. Kevin actually has this arm out for base, you know, just to keep you know, the person from rolling him over and to keep this arm stretched away from his knee. His hand and his knee are gonna stretch in opposite directions and then he's gonna flip that foot way out and then back in. And now we've got a good mount, good base, and an arm isolated, ready to attack. All right, step over to mount. So we're starting our same position, and then Kevin switches his hips. He has control of the leg, and then now he's gonna end up stepping over, and as he goes, he's gonna insert that hook when he turns his hips over. Okay. So that's gonna give us stability when we get to the mount. All right, also here, you know, we've got shoulder pressure into the chin to make them face one direction to keep them from being able to try to bridge and roll us over to this side. All right, so then a little bit, you know, all, all in, you know, all of, one speed. Step over to mount. Head and arm choke from rear mount. So Kevin has his seat belt. You know, he's over one shoulder, under the other. All right, he's holding in tight. So David wants to escape. You want to escape, you know, just put yourself on the ground and to try to slide out. So he's getting over, but Kevin recognizes it and goes ahead and fights for mount. But look how low his head is, and he's able to push that left arm through and secure his head and arm choke, all right? Once he has it, it's more stable for him to step off into side control or knee on belly for the finishing pressure. Cross collar choke from rear mount. Uh, on this particular one, I mean, you could do that. You could start this from uh, the seat belt. We just happen to have double unders on this one, have the lapels, you can open them up. All right, so one hand opens the lapel for the other. All right, and then uh, we already have one collar grip and then he goes to the other collar with that one. This one, for lack of a better way of saying it, is like you're trying to cut their throat. And then the other one is pressing down. Arm bar from the rear mount. So we're in our seat belt position. On this one, Kevin's gonna take this arm and he's gonna hug the shoulder. And this is just one variation. There's several variations of this move. Uh, he's gonna bring his other arm over and he's, that is gonna be in control of, of pushing his head away. Basically, the leg will end up replacing this arm. This leg will be going across as his right leg swings around for the arm bar. Where Kevin was, David falls into that space, and there it is. Rear mount escape by sliding our shoulders to the mat. So first thing we gotta do is protect our neck. Person got to our back, they're looking for the choke. So David's doing that. Now he's gonna try to throw his shoulders to one side. So we fall, and he wants to get his head as close to the floor as, as possible. So there's not a grip switch, and he'll be able to get under and hunt for a collar or anything like that. So at this point, if, if David needs to, he'll take his right hand and push that leg down and scoot over. All right, so you notice his hand immediately came back to protect his neck. But now our job is to turn back towards the person. And it, right here, we already talked about how this person will try to mount. 
So David recognizes that. He's going to hold that knee away so that, he, that Kevin can't get the mount. And then now he's going to switch his base and he's going to end up in side control. So moving into the self-defense portion, the person that's being attacked doesn't expect an attack. That's why it's self-defense. Right, so he's standing there like this and kind of gets caught off guard. Amy's going to be throwing a round kick. So this is the round kick defense. She throws the kick. You notice Matt stepped away from it and then and caught it at the same time. All right. Now he's going to step in and sweep the leg. Good. Now we'll go one more time and a little bit more full speed or all together. Front kick defense. We're going to do two. Uh, it's all based off of blading. So the kick, we're not going to assume that you know we saw it kind of got caught at the very last second. And it's perfectly okay because the foot, it can be on you, still not hurting you. It still has to push, push through, okay? which gives us time to be able to blade that. So we'll start off with blading and punching. So Matt's going to throw a front kick, all right, which leads him right into a punch. The fact is, it doesn't matter which leg he does the front kick with. Amy can use the same hand to blade, which takes the thought process out. Okay, we notice the kick is right on us and we're able to blade and punch. So let's say Matt throws the other, the other kick. Okay. So if she prefers to punch somebody with her right hand, then she's gonna blade with her left every time on the front kick. All right, so on this one, Matt's gonna throw his right leg front kick, Amy's gonna blade it, but she's gonna end up catching it, probably because the kick was a little higher and maybe because the person was really trying to push through hard on, on the kick. So because they push through on the kick, we're able to catch it. We'll be able to get in and sweep the leg out for a really nice throw. Over under pummeling. One of the most common positions in a fight is over under. And a lot of times that happens because somebody threw a hard punch and they fell forward and then now you're over under. All right, so it's a 50-50 position. And what they're fighting for right now is double unders, which gives us control over the person's hips uh, as we learn in our first two stripes. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put them in over under. All right, and in theory right now, they're just both fighting for double unders. All right, so they're gonna do a little drill. As Amy is bringing her uh, over hook over Matt's arm, Matt's gonna be doing the same thing on this side. All right, so they're both trying to get it, but they both end up in over-under again. And this just keeps happening. All right, so right here, they're not moving their feet because they're focusing on learning how to do that with their arms. And then as that gets easy, they can start to move around, which would be more like real sparring when you're fighting for those double-unders. Good. Foot trip or sweep from over-under. So once again, we're in the over-under position. Now, what's happening in this situation is, you know, people don't just sit there and hold on to each other, all right? There's, you got, you know, somebody's the aggressor. So, on this one, Amy's the aggressor, and she, we're, we're simulating that she's driving him backwards, all right? But, to start, we're going to just do the footwork, all right? So, Matt's going to step out of the way, and he's going to be pulling up on Amy as he's turning her body. All right, his foot is gonna mark her foot over here. All right, if you notice that he's not kicking her, it's the bottom of his foot that's trapping that foot and Amy would be falling over here, all right? Um, so I'm gonna do a couple more reps just to show you how to do some fit-ins. You can watch the posture. Obviously the person is up on this one, all right? They don't have their head down like they're taking a shot or anything like that, okay? So realistically speaking, there's gonna be movement. So on this one, you know, them working together, uh, Amy's going to simulate the forward pressure and Matt's going to do the trick. All right, so now we'll just do it from a different angle. So I'll have Matt's back to the camera. Over under, hip throw. So they're in over under again. And we'll do the footwork uh, without any forward momentum or anything. 
So Matt's going to step across. And you notice that his feet are actually in between Amy's feet. They're either right in front of or just inside of Amy's feet. He's not going to have like a really super wide base where it's all upper body strength pulling the person over. Okay? Um, and anytime you're going to do a throw, you know, you're looking to get your hips below the other person's hips so that you're going to have the leverage to be able to lift. Okay? All right, so now we'll go ahead and add some movement to the throw. Toshi. So once again, we're over under, and it's not the only hold that we can do this from. It's just such a, a common hold that I have it on our stripes three and four. Um, so anyway, here we are, and Matt's going to demonstrate the footwork all by itself for a little bit. You notice that he is stepping to the outside of her foot on this one. All right, so let's uh, change angles just a little bit. Good. All right, so now we'll go ahead and talk about how this often occurs off of a regular hip throw. Somebody will go do a hip throw and the person will slide off of the hips so that they recognized it just soon enough that they could slide around or step around that leg, which uh, forces us to jump into Tai Toshi really quick. So now we'll put it all together. So it's great that the other person noticed what we were doing, but we had a secondary move ready to go. Shoulder throw. So once again, we're in over under. All right. Uh, we're just doing the footwork, just doing the fit in right now. Uh, so Matt's going to step in. He's going to bring his arm under instead of leaving it where it was. Usual mechanics, your hips below theirs. All right, you're going to tilt in order to get the, the leverage to lift. Realistically speaking, there's going to be some forward pressure or forward movement. We're going to use that against them. Notice that when Matt finishes the throw, he's in control of his body. He's still holding on to her arm. Uh, the better you get at the throws too, um, the less trauma the person that you're throwing can take. Uh, but more importantly, we want to be in control of that person when they hit the ground, so don't just let go of them. Defensive base against throws. This is all about recognition. So let's say Matt is going to do the throw. Amy recognizes that it's coming. All right, so she's going to jam his hips before he can get them across. Once again. Good. And it's all about early recognition and just trying to stop that move before it gets going. Outside reach. Once again, we're going to do this from over under, not the only position that we could do it from. Uh, Matt recognizes the opportunity. He's going to make sure that he steps his foot next to Amy's foot, of course leaving room for the other leg to come through because we're going to chop this one out. All right, Matt's head is forward because if you, know, if you were going to do this like some schoolyard takedown where he puts his leg behind Amy's leg and his posture is poor where his head's up, they're essentially in the same position. So you don't want to get muscled over because your entry was incorrect. So he wants to dominate with that entry. His head's forward and then swings his leg through to sweep the leg. We'll do one full speed. Inside read. So we're uh, over under again. Okay, so Amy's going to demonstrate the footwork. And once again, this, this move could be your first one. Uh, we will end up showing it as a, as a combination as well. All right, so she's going to go through the footwork here. Nice. That leg that's actually doing the sweep is going to draw a circle. All right, so you really have to have good follow through with that move. You don't just stick it in there and hook. All right, so 
There it is, good. Uh, let's turn just a little bit, let's turn Max back to the camera there, and she's gonna go ahead and finish this throw. All right, so now we're gonna show how that can be used in combination. Matt recognizes the outside read, moves his leg back, and leaves his other leg vulnerable for an inside read. Sucker punch defense. So these guys are just standing there talking, and, and you know, if we're talking actual self-defense, yeah, you might be somewhat surprised the person threw a punch, but you're always reading the other person's body language, all right? Temper and intent. You can tell by the way somebody looks at you, the way they're carrying their body, that something might be getting ready to happen, but Kevin didn't go into a fighting stance yet because then for sure the fight's on. So um, he's standing there maybe talking to him, uh, and all of a sudden David wings a couple of punches. So he goes to the biceps, all right? One bicep, then the other bicep, and then he melts kind of right into the T position. Uh, Kevin has his right leg behind David, his left leg in front, and his hips are stuck to David's hips. You don't want space. You give them space, they're gonna get away. All right, so the fact that Kevin is in this position is gonna cause David to struggle, and in that struggle is where we're gonna get our takedowns. Now let's say if um, there was no movement, Kevin would not let go to strike. He could, his left foot could, could foot stomp if he wanted to. His left knee could go into the groin and his head could headbutt. All right? Those would be softening techniques that we could use while we're setting up our takedowns. The first one being the hip throw. So Kevin's left foot's already really where it needs to be. It's in front of or just inside of the legs. So he brings the other one in, nice hip movement. There's the leverage for the throw. And now he's gonna retrace right back into the T position. Um, the, le the takedown from behind, all right, where he's just gonna basically sit and bring him down works perfectly with the hip throw. If he's going for the hip throw and David recognizes it, he can switch right into the takedown from behind. Right to the mouth. Now we're gonna do the leg hook takedown. And this is all very systematic from the exact same position. So there's no particular order, it's all based on what this person does. So especially if this person is starting to move away, his stance may widen out. And Kevin's gonna step, pull that leg out, and go right into the mount. So it's really the same leg hook takedown that you did in strikes one and two. We're just doing it from this particular T position. So we do the bear hug from behind, under the arms. There's several defenses to this. Uh, you know, some people, the first thing they do is start to strike, but the problem with that is it doesn't stop you from being picked up and slammed on your head or anything. So base is always the first thing that you want to do. You want to sink your base, and on this one, we'd love to be fighting the hands, all right? Um, so since we're worried about being picked up, while we would be f getting ready to fight the hands, let's say Kevin goes to pick David up maybe for a suplex, all right? So he hooks the leg so that his head can't go any further up. So when Kevin drops him, he's gonna go down and he's gonna grab a hold of Kevin's ankle and pull it out from underneath him. When he hits the ground, we actually end up in a position where we can do a knee bar, all right? So where we can break the guy's leg. But the main thing is that we were in a bad spot to start with and we were able to get out. So we had immediate action to keep them from doing whatever it was they were gonna do once they got a hold of us. All right, so now let's move a little further and talk about fighting the hands. So, you know, maybe um, he got his hands in and, you know, Kevin did lift him and he uh, hooked the leg and we're back down, okay? So what we're gonna try to do is move the hands to one hip and then we're gonna have pressure we're like we're stepping out and pushing down to break those hands. Now, as soon as those hands break, we want to turn back towards the person so that we're not giving up our back again and that we would be able to either advance forward or move back out. All right, so that was breaking the hands apart, okay, or fighting the hands. But now we're gonna actually get a Kimura grip. I would consider this to be a little bit more advanced. Um, so uh, actually let's go back and get the hands together. So the left hand's on his wrist and the right arm's gonna come under and get, the, get our grip. All right, so we're gonna actually try to break the grip from there with the same type of motion. 
Uh, the standard variation, David's going to spin around and basically get, well, let's actually walk around and get the, the hammer lock here. All right, so like you're walking around. So we want to keep you grip. So. Good. Same thing. All right, so he's going to break the grip. And he's just going to step around and just put that arm right up behind Kevin's back. Okay? So this is where we are. And this is legit. Um, you know, you can, the faster you go, the more likely you're going to injure the person, like in a street fight. You wouldn't be going slow like you would with your partner. All right? Now we're going to do the fa a fancier version when you have an a, a, you know, experienced opponent um, where you're going to hook the leg, flip him over, and get a Kimura from side control. So he goes under. All right, he's going to break that loose. He's going to turn, but he's going to hook the leg with his right leg because spinning around behind somebody isn't always easy to do. So he's going to sit and create a shoulder throw for Kevin. He never lets go of that Kimura. He comes up to the top. All right, and we have different Kimura finishing options once we get there. Bear hug from behind over the arms. Now, what's most important is the very first reaction. Of course, we're going to drop our base, but at the same time, we're going to bring our arms up. That's to ruin the hold that he has on us at that exact moment. Now, obviously, you can't stay here. So as soon as he does that, he's going to step around to the back. Once, once we're here, I mean, we've got options, all right? But we're gonna assume, you know, the person, they're still holding on to us real tight. We're gonna actually get behind their knees with our hands and we're gonna scoop our hips in, all right? And which is gonna throw the person all the way over to the other side. All right, so um, if the person is extremely large or you're, uh, I don't know, you have a hurt back or it doesn't matter why, if you just, here's an, another option is just to buckle their knees and end up in side control. And when I'm talking about buckling the knees, once you step behind them, your knee just buckles theirs as you're doing the opposing pressure in the opposite direction. Bear hug from the front, under the arms. All right, so Kevin has got double unders on David, which we already know is a bad position. So David's gonna to try to have an immediate reaction. He's gonna to try to get his hands underneath Kevin's chin, and he's gonna to try to stretch everything away. All right, so he's gonna use that to break the hole. And as soon as the hole is broken, we have a lane here in the middle where we can throw strikes. All right, so as we're doing that, sometimes the person will turn their head away from your hand pressure. So we'll make a frame. So your forearm is there, and then your other hand is connected in, trying to support. You're gonna turn your hips away to break that hold. And then once again, as soon as the hold is broken, that's a good time to fill that space with strikes. Nice. So in addition to breaking the hold to strike, we could also just go to a throw. So Kevin's got his double unders again. Immediately, David is squeezing those arms together because the more Kevin's arms get squeezed together, the harder it is for him to hold on with his grips. Uh, at the same time that David's doing that, he's also shooting his hips back as soon as possible before those hips get pulled in really tight. So he's gonna keep that over, those overhooks that he's got. He's gonna walk to the side. Once he's there, he's essentially like in that T position that we were in before, and he's gonna move his hips in front so that he can lift for the hip throw. We'll go ahead and do one all together. Bear hug from the front, over the arms. So Kevin gets the bear hug. David immediately pops his hips back and gets his hands wedged in. What you want is your elbows against your stomach so that if the person's pulling, they would have to break your forearm bones in order to actually close that distance. If your elbows are hanging out, then they can, they'll, they'll be able to collapse you back in. That's a very strong hold. So as soon as we get this wedge, we're gonna walk around out from in front of them. And then we're kind of in that same position we were where we could do the throw. This hand, see how all he had to do is he took it from the hip and just made a little hook on it. All right, uh, he's gonna move his hips to the front and do the throw. Two-handed strangle. We're gonna do a couple of versions. Uh, the first one's the simplest. 
All right, so we're going to assume that if somebody's strangling us, there's probably going to be some forward pressure. So Kevin gets base, and then he circles out. So the only thing that was able to hold us was the thumbs. So your head goes through those thumbs to break that grip. You circle right back up for a possible punch, clinch, whatever it is that you want to follow up with. The main thing is that we got past that initial grip. All right, so now starting the same way, but um, it could be because there's forward momentum and you felt like doing this, or you just like to move. So uh, Kevin is actually gonna split through. He's gonna step to David and bring his elbow up. Now you notice that their hips are connected. So it's not just that Kevin's throwing an elbow strike or anything. He's actually trying to get this grip. So he gets his base for a perfect throw. All right, nice. That's a nice lift right there. And we'll go ahead and put it all together. All right, so he's right there ready to attack with punches, kicks, arm bars, whatever it is that he wants to do. 